in continuation with my previous session here we'll have another set of uh, 10 questions uh, from operating system domain and we'll be providing you the answer as well hope the last session was useful i hope you guys have really made some knowledge out of it okay when can someone call an os and open source os simple when the source code is available for you to edit do some modification test it build it that is called an open source os for example, if you take Ubuntu, if you take few versions of Linux available in the market, they are all open source, the codes are available, but Windows, you will not get the code. So that's called an open source OS. So please remember, all the open source OS will have the codes readily available for you. What is a daemon process? A daemon process is something which can be referred as a background process. It will automatically come into picture, it will run itself, it will do the necessary work assigned to it and it will leave. It will not require any manual intervention or manual parameters. For example, uh, every day uh, an IT company may want to understand how many users have logged in into their system. So they can run a daemon process in the background without even the knowledge of, a, uh, of an employee or without even intervening the employee's regular work and they can get the detail. So likewise, this daemon process will run in the background to make sure that it collects the detail or it does the work it has been destined to it and it will get it done without any manual intervention. Assume you are given at the Linux Unix machine, how will you find the process ID of the file which you have executed? Simple. We need to use ps-al that will have the name of the processes that are running live in the machine or while running the process itself, if you use an ambersen, I mean the ambersen symbol which is uh, uh, just above 7 in your keyboard, you will get the process ID instantly displayed in your machine. Your process ID will be normally an integer allotted by the system. Between what ranges the number can be, i.e. what is the uh, highest integer can be allotted as the process ID in your Ubuntu, that is your Linux. Simple, 2, 2, 3, 2, 6, 7, 8. Why not 1? 1 is the process ID which is allocated for the first process called INIT, which is nothing but INIT. So this can be tracked from CD space backslash PROC file system. When you go there, you will get all the process which are running in the machine live and one would be the first process which is listed there. So it cannot be assigned to the any user created process. It is an init process from 2 till 3, 2, 6, 7, 8 are the process are the IDs that we can get assigned for the process. So please remember it. PCB expanded as process control block plays a major role in OS. What is it all about? Simple. PCB is a DABBA which collects the complete information about process. It is a diagnostic tool that has the details about what is the current state of process. Is it running? Is it stopped? Is it interruptible? Like that. Then program counter status. What is the next line's address that is being held? CPU register information, CPU utilization information, stats, memory information and even mounting information. It is a complete diagnostic tool for each and every process that is available in an OS. So every process will have its own PCB and in Linux, i.e. Ubuntu, you can access that and you can see the content also when a process is up and running. For you to extract the information about the process control block, the only thing that you need to remember is you can do it for a process which is live, which means which is running. You cannot take a PCB for a process which is dead or which has completed its work. What is a thread? How is it different from a process? Simple. A thread is a basic unit of CPU. A process could be made up of multiple threads. Every process has a unique process ID as we know it, but every uh, threads, every thread inside a process will have a thread ID, but a thread ID from process A may be similar to the thread ID in process B. Inside a process, thread IDs are, threads ID is all unique. And when you compare it with another process, there could be two threads having the same thread ID. One simple example for normal thread that I can give you is, you open a, a web page, you might have multiple advertisements coming in the same web page parallelly. They are all different threads you can understand. So a thread is something which multiple, a thread is something which can be regarded as a small unit of a process. A small functional unit that is getting aligned to a process is what I can call a thread as multiple threads may come together to form a process. It is easy to track a process ID. It is not easy to track a thread ID. You cannot just like that put an ambersen and get a thread ID in Linux. You have pthread underscore self for getting the thread ID. Thread ID is also unique but within the process. This is the difference that you need to understand. What is context switching? How can we define it? Simple. Context switching, I can give you with a simple example. I am playing a game in my mobile right now. I am getting a call. 
what will happen immediately the call gets i mean the call gets the higher priority and the control gets transferred to the call i'll attend the call once the call is done i'll come back to the uh, previous game whatever i had been playing will the game start from the beginning or will we start from the place where we have halted or where we have passed we'll start from the place where we have stopped where we have halted this is called context switching i am switching the context from the game to the call and i am coming back based on the priority so this is all done by your operating system the context here is the score maybe whatever score i had been uh, scoring till the time that i got a call which level uh, did i uh, stop the game there in all these are the context information which are to be stored in the stack which will be retrieved again once you come back to the previous process so it is like switching from current work to a next work and then coming back to the previous work if needed what is an interrupt how can we easily define it simple i normally tell this with a regular example um i am teaching in the class for example if someone raises their hand in between to ask a query it is an interrupt so that is to get a, a request from me i mean get a service from me that person is raising hand i will answer the query and then i will continue with my previous work this is interrupt coming to the microprocessor or an operating system terminology whenever a particular service is requested that can be raised through an interrupt and that can be responded based on the priority this is called interrupt what is polling when interrupt is not supported or in in alongside with interrupt also we can go with polling what do you mean by that the microprocessor or the operating system itself will go around and ask for service requirements for example i am the teacher okay. i'll go and ask each and every student do you have any query do you have any query like this i will start from student 1 to student 60 and if somebody has a query i will answer or else i will keep continuing my work so i poll my peripherals i poll my connected components for my service requirements from their side it is called polling if they ask me it is interrupt if i ask them it is called polling so please remember the difference both still have a vital role in the industry uh, a cannot kick b out of the market a is interrupt b is polling how is program counter useful in operating system simple uh, program counter is the one that holds the address of the next instruction to be executed so in operating system i am handling one particular process there is another higher priority process which is coming in which is nothing but context switching so i need to complete the task and then i will have to come back to the previous place also so for that i need to store the addresses where will i store the addresses from i'll take the address and put it onto the program counter for me to navigate elsewhere their program counter is useful once the work is completed at the destination i'll have to come back to the previous place so that address will be again moved to the program counter from the stack for me to come back so for a simple function call till the complex interrupt handling i need program counter without which my operating system might not be complete so please remember program counter is a register it can be a 16 bit register 32 bit register based on the architecture of the microprocessor that we are picking up it is the register and the bits would vary from architecture to architecture we will get back to you with more questions in the next session where i will have final that final 10 questions out of this 30 questions i hope this is uh, very useful for you if you have any comments please come back to me in the comment section please subscribe if you like this channel thank you very much for following me up thank you very much for watching my video thanks